Hello and welcome back to Scripture Channel. Today I'm going to describe and explain giving, offering, sowing, and tithing. So all of those who believe tithing is only Old Testament only, I'm going to prove how it is also relevant this age and day. I'm going to start first with giving. I'm going to start from Acts 20 and 35. Acts 20 and 35. I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now again, it says, I have showed you all things how that so laboring Ye are to support the weak. That means you should look out for the weak, the needy, and the poor. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, and this is his words, Christ's words, who is the only begotten Son of God, who is one with God and the Holy Ghost, through love, spirit, and truth, it is more blessed to give than to receive. There's no more need to discuss giving. It's over. The conversation is over. So giving is a good thing. It is of God, but you should do it from your heart. You should not do it, do it and be expecting something in return from the person you give to. Now, I'm going to move to sowing. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. In other words, if you plant seeds sparingly, um, you shall reap the harvest of those seeds sparingly. And if you sow seeds bountifully, you shall reap also those seeds bountifully. Now, my pastor um, teaches us to um, label the seed. I have sowed seeds several times with labels on them, but I remember one time I sowed a seed for $2. And when I got back home, a $250 living room set, was um, there waiting for me from a neighbor that was leaving. Now, they were going to charge me 254 and I was going to get them the money on that Sunday evening. And I made some calls to borrow some extra money so I could get it. And by the time I got home, I had mostly all of the money. And I was making some calls to get another 50 or $60 so I could give him the money for the furniture. While I was making the calls, the neighbor knocked on the door. And I said, hey, man, I'll get with you shortly. I'm making some phone calls trying to get the rest of that money. He said, come on over. I need to show you something. So I went over to see what he wanted. And the living room furniture, which was the couch and the sofa and the chair and a coffee table, gave it to me for free. Didn't charge me the $250. Then turned around, gave me a, about an eight or $900 bicycle to store for him. It told me I could ride it when I wanted to. It was an aluminum bike with the aluminum um, rims and with the glue-on tires. Not the tires that, you know, fit down in the rim. No, these were like some type of a skin tire that glued onto the rim and the pressure hold it, held it on there. Anyway, he came later, about a couple of years later, and came and got the bike. It was all in good shape and tires pumped up and everything. So um, that's a good thing. Now, another testimony is that same week, that same Sunday that I sold that $2, I turned around and I said, I'm going to sow $20 this next Sunday. And that next Sunday, I gave it a try. And when I got home, my phone had a bunch of calls on it. And one guy kept consistently calling. And I'm going to tell you his name. His name was David Rawls. He called me to tell me that he had a whole bunch of equipment that he needed me to come pick up. Don't have to pay him anything for it, but whatever I can haul, I can have. And out of that, I got a about a $20,000 camera, 
uh, the big kind that you put on your shoulder. I got a very huge Glass Valley mixer, um, two black pepper spotlights, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I could use for doing video back in the day. And um, that's how it works. So sowing works. But I'm going to warn you, you should sow seeds in fertile ground. Now, I was talking about seeds of money um, and on those particular times, but you can also sow your time. Now, your time in helping and serving others. There's 24 hours in a day. You can sow 10% of your day, two hours and some 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 minutes to to um, however many it be. I didn't figure it out, but two hours and some minutes to, to give back, um, to, to help and serve others. You can do that. Matter of fact, you can spend that time studying your Bible, trying to, you know, study the word um, and learn the word and understand what God is trying to show you and tell you. So there's much you can do with two and a half or two hours and 30 minutes or three hours or whatever a day. It's not that complicated. Now, I'm going to move on to the next scripture, which is going to be for... Offering and tithing, and this is very simple, offering and tithing, and a lot of people who have problems with tithing, uh, they always have to think that the preacher is getting the tithe and all of this type of stuff. Uh, most preachers just have a salary. Um, the tithing goes to the storehouse, and they use it to pay bills and to uh, help others or whatever they may do with it. If you're concerned about that, go there and find out before you tithe there. Make sure the money is being done with what you believe should be done. Stop talking about folks you know nothing about. Uh, you don't know anything about what goes on in the church. And a lot of these big-time pastors, they have a whole lot of ministries. A lot of them have opened up schools and hospitals. They travel back and forth across country, all types of things. A lot of, a lot of them have gotten rich from book sales, but people will get out there and lie through their teeth and say that they been stealing the folks' tithe. And then first thing they want to say is, well, how can they rich when their members are poor? You don't know their members. Go look and see for yourself. Stop lying. Now, let's get to the offering and the tithe. Malachi 3, third chapter, 7 through 12. And I want you to listen to this carefully because a whole lot of people get this all mixed up. They get it tore up from the beginning and, and just mess it all up and they become hateful to tithing. But tithing is a good thing and it works. And I've been tithing for well over 15 years now. Uh, before that, I wasn't tithing a red cent. Maybe once or twice in, 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 in the time I was maybe nine years old up until the time I was maybe... Uh, 30 years old, uh, 35, I might have tithed maybe two or three times in all those years. But in 2000, I started tithing and have been tithing ever since, and it works. I guarantee it. Now, Malachi 3, 7 through 12, be very careful how you listen to this. This is the one that shuts down all of the naysayers and all of the wicked people who are against tithing properly. Malachi 3, chapter 3, 7 through 12. Here's the killer right here. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Now that's God saying, even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Now listen what it says here. Return unto me and I will return unto you. So you have stepped away from God's ordinances. He's asking you to step back in. Return back to him and he will return back to you. Saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Somebody asked, well, where are we going to return? Okay, here's where you return. So for all of the haters of tithe, here's where you return. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. 
But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. Number nine. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Number ten. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, host, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And number 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your, shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Now listen, it says again, he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, saying that the enemy will not destroy the fruits because where God is protecting it, the enemy won't be able to destroy it. Now going on, um, your vine, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And number 12, and all nations shall, shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, there you have it. And the key is, God is explaining that you have left the ways of God through time. He's asked you to come back. Come back to him, and he'll come back to you. But he's asked you to come back with offerings and tithes. Now I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 3, 9 through 10. Honor the Lord with thy, with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Then it says on verse number 10, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. And that's plain and simple. And you can use this literally, okay? When you sow, you're going to harvest. You're going to reap what you sow. So if you continue to sow good, you continue to sow your time, you sow your money, uh, you sow your your knowledge, your wisdom. If you, if you share God's word, you sow God's word into people, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back. That's plain and simple. You're going to reap what you sow. So all the naysayers... You just lost everything right there. You need to get on track. Now I'm going to read some special scripture from out of Matthew, which a lot of people do this, and that is they worry. I only made $100 this week, and I got to take 10 of those dollars and put it in church for a tithe. I need that $10 to pay a bill. Hey, do not worry. Just do what you're supposed to do, but do it out of your heart. Anyway, check this out. Matthew 6. 25 through 34. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Number 29. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like on one of these. Number 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? 31. 32, 33, and 34. Listen carefully. Therefore, this is 31. Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or 
wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first, and this is 33, listen carefully. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you seek the kingdom of God first, all these things will be added. When you seek to do God's will first, all these things will be added. When you seek to obey God first, all these things will be added. And then number 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So, now, there you have it. It is plain and simple. It's clear and precise. If you're going to give, and let me give you an example. Getting off of the interstate exit, seeing a guy holding a sign, and you throw him out $5 or a dollar, that's not the proper way to give. Now, I can understand if you don't have time to stop, but go back. So give them something then and maybe go back. But if you have the time, go pull over somewhere. Go back and meet that person. Go talk to them. Find out how they got that way. Maybe there's something you can do to help them. They might be a carpenter. They might be a plumber. You might know somebody who's a carpenter who's looking for a, carpen a carpenter's helper or a plumber's helper or something. You don't know that till you find out. You got to know them. I mean, if you love them, you would want to find out how they got that way. And, and so you can help deliver them or heal them through Christ. So, you know, give with intentions to help them get out of that situation so, so they don't have to be standing on the exit with the sign saying we'll work for food or so-and-so. Now, as far as the offering. They collect offerings in church all the time. Those offerings are for the church. Um, they use it to help people. They use it to pay bills or whatever they do. It's your business to find out if you want to put your offer in there. If you don't want to put your offer in there, then you know go somewhere else where you can. Um, don't make up lies about people, what they're spending the money on if you don't know. Because a lying tongue is an abomination under God. Being a false witness is an abomination under God. Make sure to look at my, my video on abominations under God that most commit all day and all night. And very few talk about it. Now, as far as sowing, sow your seeds in fertile ground. It doesn't make sense to try to sow God's word into a brick head. A brick head is not going to listen. They don't want to change. They could care less about changing. But because you know them, because they're family, they're a, a friend or a loved one, you're going to spend all your time trying to, energy and time trying to show them something that, you know, try to lead them to Christ. And they don't want to go to Christ. So while you're spending all your energy and time on that person, you can't feel the person tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, I want to know Christ. You can't, you can't feel that because you're too focused over there. Now, as far as sowing seeds, you know, sow it in fertile ground. Look for, you know, if you're going to sow um, education, knowledge, and wisdom to people, seek the people who want that. Seek the people who are looking for that. Don't go trying to force it down nobody's brain, ears, and all of this type of stuff. Sow it in the fertile ground. Same thing if you sow your seeds to a ministry on TV. Make sure it's fertile ground. I mean, there's a lot of shysters out there. You got to remember, the high majority of the people on the face of this earth that have lived in the past and that are living now are going straight to hell. There's no ifs, ands, but the road to hell is very wide, and very few will be going to heaven. So you might as well face the facts. If that's the case, you got to understand that the majority of these Leaders, preachers, and teachers out here are, are false, fake, and phony, or just doing it wrong. So all of these buildings that are fixed up, made up, and painted up to look like house of God, the high majority of them are not of God. you just going to have to face reality. So seek out that which is of God. And last one on the tithing, along with offering, turn back to God. Turn back to his ordinances, 
okay? So he will return back to you. So, until next time, be blessed. Hallelujah! <laughs>